All right, now you're looking at this thing from a top-down angle. It's kind of weird, but uh, it goes. Uh, if you have one of these, you'll know where the placement is. This is the. Uh, these are the. Um, oh. These are the preset keys. These do the different drum beats, and uh, as you can see in here, there's a whole bunch of contacts. Well, you might not be able to see here. Let's, let's see if we can. Yeah, there's one. There's a whole bunch of contacts, and you can see I've got alligator clips on there. Well, so you also might be able to see uh, these keys are all out. So, you know, if you push one in, and usually they just switch. Well, if you just lightly push one, they'll all, it'll reset them all. So, let's turn this thing on. We have add base in here. Now, watch this. When you connect some of these connections, say you like the... Uh, like the snare on two and three. Well, we connect these two. One, two, three, four, or two and four actually. And now let's add some weird, funky, Hammond synthesized hi-hat in. Yeah, there, see now I can pick other hi-hat settings I want too. Uh, let's see, what's this one like? That just makes it do weird funky crap. And that just hits the uh, hi-hat on every four. Uh, oh, this one's weird here. This one makes the bass drum go. Um, like that. That's kind of cool. I like this one. That's kind of a cool one. I think that's hitting on its hand beats. But you know, see, these are much cooler than the presets. You know, whether this is like the ventures. Which I'm sure was fine for the period, but they, just, they were just all really strange. No, there's nothing really. What the heck is this? Anyhow, they're all really strange, no rocking ones. So this will be good with the bass drum thing. Actually, maybe not. Oh, and of course, if you go into the red, these were like the like marimba, bongo, whatever ones. So you get these weird. Get the uh, that kind of stuff. So, oh, right, okay. So back to where I was. Okay, that's not right beat. That was oh, hang on. Let me retry that. Anyhow, here's my ideas is what you could do is you could figure out which of these rhythm things connect to you know what rhythms they do and then you could have a instead of having all these switches with, with preset rhythms what you could do is you could have like uh, you could have like the snare drum thing on an alligator clip 
and the hi-hat thing on an alligator clip, and the bongos and all the various instruments, and then you could have the beats that you want them to go on uh, in a row, and you could just uh, take the instrument you want, put them on that rhythm, that rhythm, that rhythm, you know, and then you'd have your own custom beats. And that'd be pretty cool. That's my idea. So, um, this rhythm two goes from being a crappy preset weirdo drum machine thing. And you could make it into some kind of, you know, nice, I don't know, lo-fi synth thing or something. I'm not really into that, but, you know, some people are. Uh, anyhow, that's the idea I have. Um, because as you can see, the way this this works is with these switches, they they connect various instruments to various rhythms, and the rhythms fire the tss, 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 or whatever it wants, you know. So that's how that works. It's just like it's just like the uh, this thing on the keys. I don't know what you call this percussion or something or rhythm or whatever. Anyhow, it's like that except instead of fired by key contacts. It's fired by a low frequency, uh, various low frequency oscillators. Uh, so yeah, that's that. All right, now I wanted to show you another thing I figured out about this rhythm two thing. This section here, this board, compared to these two boards, this board does the synthesizing of the drum noises. And this one, all these wires are the different rhythms. All these wires, on the other hand, are the different instruments. So I figured out yellow here is snare drum. And what I've got is I've alligator clamped on a piezoelectric um, buzzer, red wire, positive, going to the snare drum wire, and black goes to ground. Now, as you may know, piezoelectric means that when the crystal, which is that white or ceramic, that white ceramic stuff on there you see, when that is compressed, it makes uh, electricity. Ooh, sorry for the camera shake there. So, compressed. These are used for drum triggers in electronic drum sets. Watch. As you can see, bam, it makes drum sounds. Awesome, right? I know. So if you got all these, if you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. If you got twelve of these things, in fact, I think this one is just audio. Some of these aren't actually synthesizer noises. Um, you can actually tell if they're synthesizer by um, oop, there we are, by just tapping stuff on it because the the clicking of the circuit touching your skin will activate the sound. So there's a tom thing. It's a clave, you can barely hear it. That's another clave thing, it's just barely coming on though. And I don't think that's anything, nor is that. Well, I think that's just ground. These might just, these are just power wires, I bet. Anyhow, so if you had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, the bass drum one is very sensitive. If you had eight of these piezoelectric things and you could mount them on practice pads and set up a whole drum set and wire it into this thing and you'd have yourself a very ghetto, completely analog electronic drum set. How cool would that be? You could run it into like a tube amp and like some reverb. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Anyhow, food for thought.